Assalamualaikum. Good morning, everybody. Today we are going to discuss the ICA tools for the High Surveillance Program and Ministry of Health. There must be written policies and procedures for the surveillance of healthcare-associated infections using CDC NHSN latest definitions, which are approved by the National MOH guidelines. There should be CLAPSI, Central Line Associated Blood Stream Infection. Cauti, catheter associated urinary tract infection, WAP, ventilator associated pneumonia, VAE, ventilator associated event, which should include adult as well as pediatric, SSI, the surgical site infections, MDRO, multi drug resistant organisms, according to the hospital's scope of service. For this, we have to verify that they know the surveillance definition, which is an essential component of an effective infection prevention and control program. It is a systemic method of ongoing collection, consolidation and analysis of data concerning the distribution and determinants of a given disease or event, followed by the dissemination of that information to those who can improve the outcome or the stakeholders. They should know what are healthcare associated infections. A healthcare associated infection is considered the infection which starts if the date of event of the NHSN site specific infection criterion occurs on or after the third calendar day of admission to an inpatient location where the day of admission is calendar day one. Here for us in high surveillance as we are focusing on the ICUs, so we have to know all about the ICUs. We have 16 types of ICUs which include adults and the pediatric ICUs. Why the surveillance is done? The purpose of surveillance is to measure the incidence of healthcare associated infection and organisms, to establish an endemic rate of highs, to detect, investigate and control the hospital clusters or the outbreaks of healthcare associated infections, to monitor, evaluate and implement the necessary preventive measures, to work on reducing the healthcare associated infections using the standard bundles and to monitor the antimicrobial susceptibilities which is very important. For CLAPC, it should include the definition for CLAPC, CAUTI, VAP, and VAE, the central line, the central line associated. Let's start with CLAPC and CAUTI. If you are following CLAPC and CAUTI in a specific Infection Control Department, just check how they have documented the number of infections or the events, the number of patient days and the device days. And they need to know the formula, how it is calculated and how the, how the information is documented. It should be well documented. It shouldn't be incomplete or inappropriate. It should be similar the way the GDIPC has directed to follow them. For VAP and VAE, now almost VAP will not be calculated anymore. VAE is calculated for adult ICUs, adult VAE and for pediatric ICUs, pediatric VAE. As this is new, you need to know the pattern of adult VAE. It should be followed accordingly. First is WAC, ventilator associated complication. Second is IVAC, which is infection related ventilator associated complication. The third is probable or possible ventilator associated pneumonia. You have to ask the individual information if they know the definitions or not and if they have collected the, the data accordingly, they need to know the PEEP and FIO2 values for WAC. For IVAC, they need to know the WBCs, white blood cell count and the temperature. And the third important point is qualifying antimicrobial days, which are four in case of IVAC. Then only IVAC is fulfilled. The third one is possible or probable ventilator associated pneumonia. For this, they have to know the culture result for that patient. If they are not following this pattern, they won't be able to calculate the adult VAE. Just make sure that they are following. Tell them if VAC is accomplished, then only they can go to IVAC. And if IVAC is accomplished, then only they will go to PVAC. And then only the event will be recorded if there is IVAC or PVAC. They both are included in the event, event of ventilator. For pediatric VAE, in the MCH hospitals or in the pediatric or the neonatal ICUs, they need to know 
the MAP and FIO2. If they know these values and they know the definitions, it means they are working correctly for these definitions. Let's go to SSI, the surgical site infections. For surgical site infections, they have to know which procedure to be included. We have almost 38 procedures which are to be followed in the CDC NHSN list. So out of these 38 procedures, they are not, they should not collect the information for, for more than three. They should be limited to one and they should not include more than three. They need to know the, which procedure should be followed. The, they should follow the most risky and the most common procedure inside their hospital depending on the type of the hospital they have. It is different in central and general hospitals. It is different in maternal and children hospitals and it is different in case of cardiac centers. They have to choose according to their hospital scope of service. And what other information they need to know for SSI, they need to know the ASA scoring, the procedure information and the duration, the risk category index for that procedure to calculate the rate according to the risk category index, which is very, very important. For MDROs, multi-drug resistant organism, you have to know where we are following the MDROs. Currently, we are following the MDROs inside the critical care units only. Then you need to know that how, how many types of MDROs are there. They might include bacteria or fungi. The bacteria include gram positive or gram negative bacteria. You should know the definitions of these gram positive and gram negative bacteria, how they are differentiated and then what are they. Gram positive bacteria, they include MRSA, the methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus and BRE when vancomycin resistant enterococci for the gram positive sorry gram negative bacteria they are cephalosporin resistant Klebsiella carbapenem resistant Enterobacteriaceae MDR Acinetobacter MDR Pseudomonas or MDR Klebsiella and now recently added is Candida aureus which is supposed to be followed in the list of MDROs inside the critical care units. They have to know for all of them that how is the trend of these infections inside their critical care units and the surgical wards or the surgical emergencies. What is the trend of CLAPSI? What is the trend of CAUTI, VAP, VAE inside the ICUs? If it, then the trend is increasing or decreasing or it is mixed, then they have to follow accordingly. The coordinators, they need to follow with them accordingly and it should be informed to the General Directorate of Infection Prevention and Control. Regarding SSI, they have to know the same, the same pattern. How is the trend for the surgical site infections? The most common one which is found in the maternal and children hospital is cesarean, which is found infected most of the time. So they need to go to this operation room. They have to go to the surgeons and check that if there is a problem in the OR, what about the environmental cleaning? What about the, the environmental cleaning? And uh, what about the equipments? Is it disinfected properly or not? And they have to interview the surgeon too about his practices, how he is doing the aseptic, aseptic technique inside the OR, how he is following the surgical technique for the operations, before the operations. And in the same way, they have to know the MDRO trend. How is the trend of multi-drug resistant um, uh, organisms as it is very, very important these days as the multi-drug resistant organisms are increasing all over the world. So we have to know which organism, multi-drug resistant organism is common in our critical care unit. And what is the rate? They have to know all these. And they have to go to the labs to check the, the blood cultures and all the other cultures which are supposed to be followed inside a critical care unit. There must be written policies and procedures for the surveillance of healthcare associated infections using CDC NHSN latest definitions which are approved by the national MOH guidelines. There should be CLAPSI, central line associated bloodstream infection, CAUTI, catheter-associated urinary tract infection, 
WAC, Ventilator Associated Pneumonia, VAE, Ventilator Associated Event, which should include adult as well as pediatric. SSI, the surgical site infections, MDRO, multi-drug resistant organisms, according to the hospital's scope of service. For this, we have to verify that they know the surveillance definition, which is an essential component of an effective infection prevention and control program. It is a systemic method of ongoing collection, consolidation and analysis of data concerning the distribution and determinants of a given disease or event, followed by the dissemination of that information to those who can improve the outcome or the stakeholders. They should know what are healthcare associated infections. A healthcare associated infection is considered the infection which starts if the date of event of the NHSN site specific infection criterion occurs on or after the third calendar day of admission to an inpatient location where the day of admission is calendar day one. Here for us in high surveillance as we are focusing on the ICUs, so we have to know all about the ICUs. We have 16 types of ICUs which include adults and the pediatric ICUs. Why the surveillance is done? The purpose of surveillance is to measure the incidence of healthcare associated infection and organisms, to establish an endemic rate of highs, to detect, investigate and control the hospital clusters or the outbreaks of healthcare associated infections, to monitor, evaluate and implement the necessary preventive measures, to work on reducing the healthcare associated infections using the standard bundles and to monitor the antimicrobial susceptibilities which is very important. For CLAPSI, it should include the for CLAPSI, CAUTI, VAP, and VAE, the central line, the central line associated. Let's start with CLAPSI and CAUTI. If you are following CLAPSI and CAUTI in a specific infection control department just check how they have documented the number of infections or the events the number of patient days and the device days and they need to know the formula how it is calculated and how the how the information is documented it should be well documented it shouldn't be incomplete or inappropriate it should be similar the way the gdipc has directed to follow them for web and vae now almost VAP will not be calculated anymore. VAE is calculated for adult ICUs, adult VAE and for pediatric ICUs, pediatric VAE. As this is new, you need to know the pattern of adult VAE. It should be followed accordingly. First is VAC, ventilator associated complication. Second is IVAC, which is infection related ventilator associated complication. The third is probable or possible ventilator associated pneumonia you have to ask the individual information if they know the definitions or not and if they have collected the, the data accordingly they need to know the peep nfio2 values for wac for iwac they need to know the wbc's white blood cell count and the temperature and the third important point is qualifying antimicrobial days which are four in case of iwac then only iwac is fulfilled the third one is possible or probable ventilator associated pneumonia. For this, they have to know the culture result for that patient. If they are not following this pattern, they won't be able to calculate the adult VAE. Just make sure that they are following. Tell them if VAC is accomplished, then only they can go to IVAC. And if IVAC is accomplished, then only they will go to PVAC. And then only the event will be recorded if there is IVAC or PVAC. They both are included in the event, event of ventilator. For pediatric VAE, in the MCH hospitals or in the pediatric or the neonatal ICUs, they need to know the MAP and FIO2. If they know these values and they know the definitions, it means they are working correctly for these definitions. Let's go to SSI, the surgical site infections. For surgical site infections, they have to know which procedure to be included. We have almost 38 procedures which are to be followed in the CDC NHSN list. So out of these 38 procedures, they are not, they should not collect the information for, for more than three. 
They should be limited to one and they should not include more than three. They need to know the, which procedure should be followed. The, they should follow the most risky and the most common procedure inside their hospital depending on the type of the hospital they have. It is different in central and general hospitals. It is different in maternal and children hospitals and it is different in case of cardiac centers. They have to choose according to their hospital scope of service. And what other information they need to know for SSI, they need to know the ASA scoring, the procedure information and the duration, the risk category index for that procedure to calculate the rate according to the risk category index, which is very, very important. For MDROs, multi-drug resistant organism, you have to know where we are following the MDROs. Currently, we are following the MDROs inside the critical care units only. Then you need to know that how, how many types of MDROs are there. They might include bacteria or fungi. The bacteria include gram positive or gram negative bacteria. You should know the definitions of these gram positive and gram negative bacteria, how they are differentiated and then what are they. Gram positive bacteria, they include MRSA, the methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus and BRE, when vancomycin resistant enterococci for the gram positive, sorry, gram negative bacteria, they are cephalosporin resistant Klebsiella, carbapenem resistant Enterobacteriaceae, MDR Acinetobacter, MDR Pseudomonas or MDR Klebsiella, and now recently added is Candida auris, which is supposed to be followed in the list of MDROs inside the critical care units. They have to know for all of them that how is the trend of these infections inside their critical care units and the surgical wards or the surgical emergencies. What is the trend of CLAPSI? What is the trend of CAUTI, VAP, VAE inside the ICUs? If it, then the trend is increasing or decreasing or it is mixed, then they have to follow accordingly. The coordinators, they need to follow with them accordingly and it should be informed to the General Directorate of Infection Prevention and Control. Regarding SSI, they have to know the same, the same pattern. How is the trend for the surgical site infections? The most common one which is found in the maternal and children hospital is cesarean, which is found infected most of the time. So they need to go to this operation room. They have to go to the surgeons and check that if there is a problem in the OR, what about the environmental cleaning? What about the, the environmental cleaning? And uh, what about the equipments? Is it disinfected properly or not? And they have to interview the surgeon too about his practices, how he is doing the aseptic, aseptic technique inside the OR, how he is following the surgical technique for the operations, before the operations. And in the same way, they have to know the MDRO trend. How is the trend of multi-drug resistant uh, organisms as it is very, very important these days as the multi-drug resistant organisms are increasing all over the world. So we have to know which organism, multi-drug resistant organism is common in our critical care unit. And what is the rate? They have to know all these. And they have to go to the labs to check the, the blood cultures and all the other cultures which are supposed to be followed inside a critical care unit. Regarding the dialysis event, you are supposed to follow to the outpatient dialysis centers only not the chronic dialysis centers. You know, need to know the patient months, how many patients are registered on the first and the second working days in each of the dialysis center which you are following. You will exclude the chronic dialysis center patients, all the patients in critical care, only those patients who are coming every day in the morning and they are leaving at the end of the shift. Include all the shifts, morning, evening or night on the first two working days. Those patients who are registered on either first or the second working days of the month should not be registered again. And you have to open, just check if their file was opened 
once for that whole month. It will be included in the patient months of that month. Once only. Either patient day 1 or patient day 2. And then add them together. This will be the total patient months for that dialysis center. Then you need to know the types of excesses. How many types of, types of excesses are there in this dialysis center? If it is fistula, if it is graft, if it is either of the central line, temporary or permanent or any of the port excess site. All of these are supposed to be registered that each day how many patients are there with the fistula, with the graft, with the central lines, the two types or the port device. They have been registered once. Now they have to know that every week they will follow the number of events in that outpatient dialysis centers. They have to know the type of events, either it can be positive blood culture, pus redness or swelling or IV antimicrobial start. They have to register each of these depending on the date of occurrence, whichever will come first will be recorded accordingly. If any of these three events are interrelated, they should be, they should be recorded as one event, but all the information will be recorded inside that. UDF of dialysis event. Do not repeat uh, for the patient months. Do not repeat the patients even if the patient comes for any other reason like dressing or he is experiencing any other complaint. They will be registered for the patient months only once but the events will be recorded accordingly whenever they are appearing and the interrelated events should be recorded together and there should be a gap of 21 days in between the events of two different types. It means the two events should not be recorded again once 21, less than 21 days have passed. They can only be reported once 21 days have been passed for the same type of the event. But the events of other types can be reported within this period before 21 days. Second important point is you have to check the number of events, how they have calculated the events. It should be the number of events by patient months times 100 and it should be per type of excess. All the excess types, the events with all the excess types should be calculated differently. The events with graft, the events with fistula, the events with uh, central lines either temporary or permanent and the events with the port access devices all should be recorded separately then under each of the type of access all the events should be recorded separately with graft how many blood cultures are positive how many pus redness and swelling are positive and how many IV antimicrobial starts are positive in the same way you will follow with the graft, with the central lines and with other port access devices and then record. And they are supposed to record the bundles once every week. This is for the infection control practitioners but for the, for the nurses who are responsible for taking care of that patients, it should be every time they start the dialysis of the patient and every time they stop the dialysis of the patient. This is supposed to be followed every day, but the infection control practitioner will record only once a week how the bundle is working with them. For the dialysis event, just check if the written policy and procedure is available for the surveillance of dialysis event using the CDC NHSN definitions, which is approved by the National MOH guidelines. They should include all the outpatient hemodialysis centers. The chronic hemodialysis centers are excluded. You will just follow all those patients who are there, who are coming daily for their dialysis. The patients in the hemodialysis centers, they come on the, on the alternate days. The patients coming on Sundays, they won't come on Monday. They will come again on Tuesday and then again on Thursday. This way it works. So you have to follow these patients, register them once 
a month in the start of the month on the first or the second working day of the month and follow all the patients coming to the dialysis centers in all of the shifts and add them together and keep this record for the patient days about the adequate number of computers and a reliable internet service is available for the effective implementation of surveillance program without an interruption or not you have to know that how many how many computers are available it should be one per each infection control practitioner and a reliable continuous internet service should be available there for the effective implementation of electronic surveillance system and it should not have interruptions otherwise the electronic surveillance system won't work so just check if each of the icps in the hospitals they have a separate computer pc or laptop and they have a reliable internet working for them without an interruption so that they can record all the events at the same time when they have noticed inside their icus this if the infection control practitioners are well trained regarding the national approved electronic surveillance system and are familiar with the cdc nhsn definitions which are approved by national moh guidelines ask the infection prevention and control practitioners in depth about the understanding of identification of the healthcare associated infection events based on the cdc criteria and just confirm if they know it deeply or not you can ask different types of different criteria of lab confirmed blood stream infection you can ask if the central line is there or not if central line is there how they are labeled either they are labeled as lcbi or central line associated blood stream infections and you can ask about this the surgical site infections what are they and how they are divided what is the organ or the space in uh, organ or the space ssi so you can ask random questions about the definitions just make sure that they are familiar with the latest cdc nhsn guidelines given by the moh and just ask randomly how they are entering this data in the electronic system if they are well aware how the electronic system is working or not just make sure that this that the infection control practitioners are recording all the admitted patients in all the critical care units when they are admitted inside the critical care unit until they leave the critical care unit they are supposed to follow each and everything once the patient is there inside their critical care unit they are supposed to follow with their device insertions and removal they are supposed to follow all the cultures which are done for these patients and if these devices have any any link with those cultures if they are device associated or not and they are supposed to report these device associated infections to the infection control department the surveillance system is supposed to be carried out in active prospective targeted and patient based way active is the active surveillance is they have to go to the icus they have to go to the microbiological lab or they have to or they can get this information electron electronically from the lab they should have the complete information of the icu patient and his or her associated cultures and his or her device information this is very very important they have to follow daily all these patients inside all the critical care units where surveillance is being done the target is critical care all the critical care units in general or specialist hospitals they are general or central hospitals or specialist hospitals they are supposed to follow all the patients inside the critical care specialist hospital they are supposed to follow all the patients inside the critical care unit in the mch hospitals they are supposed to follow all the pediatric and the neonatal icus and their patients for the ssi surveillance 
they have to apply according to the national MOH guidelines. They have to select at least one surgery or maximum of three surgeries. Not more than three surgeries are allowed for at least six months to one year. It should be the most risky and the most common surgery done inside their OR. It can be changed only after six months to one year depending on the requirement of the hospital administration. If they want to follow any other surgery other than those selected, then they have to follow the administration what is being asked from them. Otherwise, only one surgery is enough for one year. Because you want to calculate, you want to get the pattern of that surgery, which you won't be able to get in less than six months. So it should be followed for at least six months to one year. Please make sure that, that the ICPs are not choosing more than three surgeries. We have found in certain hospitals that they have chosen five and more than five surgeries in a hospital. It is very difficult to follow more than three surgeries at a time, especially if you are choosing cesarean. Usually in bigger hospitals, the number is 200 to 300 and sometimes it is more. So you are supposed to follow all 200, 300 cesareans and you need to record all the information, the patient information, the procedure information, the procedure duration, ASA scoring, so it takes time. It is better to choose one which is most common and most risky surgery inside your hospital. You have to check if the hospital has a system for the post-operative follow-up and communication with the post-surgical patients regularly after the discharge for any sign and symptoms of the surgical site infection, including the patients with implants. Just make sure that at the time of surgery and at the time of discharge, if the patients are given instructions that how they have to follow up with their wound and when they have to come back, when, whenever there is any unusual event with their wound or any sign of fever or pain or redness or swelling or pus, any of these signs and symptoms appear with them. After the surgery, they have to report to the hospital immediately. They can come to surgical OPD, they can come to surgical emergency and they will be followed accordingly. So make sure that all the system is established inside the hospital. Usually in our setup, we cannot call the patients. We can just contact them after they have reported to us or after they call us that they have this problem. The SSIs can be detected by the review of all the medical records or the surgery, clinical patient records, the admission, date of readmission, emergency admissions or the OR logs. The patient charts are reviewed for the signs and symptoms of SSI when the patient is still there inside the hospital and the lab imaging and other diagnostic reports are also assessed. The clinical notes written by the surgeon inside the OR, you have to know all this information. You have to know the ASA scoring, you have to know the type of wound, the class of wound. The ASA scoring is usually done by the anesthetist at the time of the assessment of the patient before the surgery. The wound class is usually assessed by the surgeon when he is doing the surgery. So you have to know this information from the patient's record, the duration of the procedure and how long the procedure should be followed. Is it a 30 days? Is it in the 30 day surveillance period or the 90 day surveillance period? Then you will follow the patient accordingly. If the surgery is done on 1st of January and it is supposed to be for 30 days, then you will follow the patient till 30 days. Whether the patient is staying inside the uh, surgical ward or ICU or he has gone home or he has been discharged. You have to rec record this patient information up till 30 days. If the procedure that they have chosen is in the 90 days list, then follow the patient accordingly and try to find out any unusual finding accordingly.
just check if the infection control practitioner is aware of this post discharge surveillance form and if it is available in the surgical emergency in the surgical opd or not and if they are aware of the types of surgical site infections superficial incisional deep incisional and organ and space and what they are supposed to ask if they have any pain redness swelling if antibiotic they have taken or it was advised by the surgeon if any culture is taken and where it, it where it has been taken whether it was taken inside the surgical ward or inside the surgical icu or surgical emergency just check if the surveillance data is complete or not what are the targeted patients the targeted patients are icu patients usually in case of icu surveillance depending on the age group where the surveillance is being done adults in adult icus and pediatric and neonatal patients in pediatric and neonatal icus the numerators are the number of events which are recorded inside the icus the denominators are the device days and the patient days and the device utilization ratio are they all validated by the infection control practitioners at least once a month inside the icu they have to know how these this data is being recorded in the icu by the infection control practitioner responsible inside the icu are the surveillance data collection sheets available in all the icus if the document for the total admission in the critical care units in the previous month and the current month is available or not check the denominator data collection forms received from the nursing staff of the critical care unit validate the total patient days in a month the patient days is the number of days admitted patients are utilizing the services of the hospital if a patient stayed in an adult icu for 6 days it will be counted as 30 patient days they need to know the formula of the calculation they need to know what is numerator and what is denominator numerator is the upper portion of a fraction used to calculate a rate or a ratio in surveillance it is usually the number of cases of a disease or the event being observed the number of collapses or the number of vaps or the number of ssis they need to know what is denominator denominator is the lower portion of a fraction while calculating a rate or a ratio they have to review the denominator data the patient days device days like ventilator days central line days urinary catheter days and the total number of selected surgical procedures as the denominator for the ssi rate for example in case of collapse rate they have to know the number of collapses the number of central line days for ssi rate they have to know the number of surgical site infections and the total number of specific operative procedures done for device utilization ratio they need to know the device days and the patient days it is very important to count the patient under surveillance to verify in a day it should be compared with the number of beds in a critical care unit it should not exceed the number of beds 5% plus minus is acceptable in case of improvised bed are the beds are there inside that icu in case of mdro surveillance they need to know the total number of infections with a specific type of mdro suppose mrsa the number of patient days inside the icu and the formula for its calculation the total patient days represent the sum of number of days during which the services were provided to all the inpatients during the given time period inpatients they need to know the inpatients what is inpatient inpatient is when uh, the date of admission of a patient in a icu is different than the date of discharge
introduce the infection prevention and control team to verify the process of data validation, the data regarding the targeted patients in the critical care units for electronic surveillance platform, each patient admitted in the critical care unit should be entered. The numerator data should be followed. The correct identification of VAP, CLAPC, CAUT, and SSI events should be followed. Ask how the denominator data is validated. The wrongly collected denominator data would affect the highest rates and device utilization ratios. ICPs should reflect about the importance of data validation for the accurate implementation of a surveillance system electronically. Ask the number of critical care admissions and confirm whether the entered, whether the entered information in the national approved electronic surveillance platform is same or not. Ask the ICPs about the process of data validation in order to ensure the accuracy of the data. The data should be validated monthly. Ask some indirect questions. If a patient is not on any device in the ICU, will you register this patient in the electronic surveillance system or not? The answer should be yes, as we have to register all the patients inside the ICU with or without any device. As long as they are inside the ICUs. Just check that the surveillance data are regularly collected and reported to MOH through the National Approved Electronic Surveillance Platform or not. Review the manual data collection forms for both the numerator and the denominator, the patient under surveillance, device associated events and surgical site infection events if they are followed in that hospital. Ask about the record of the total patient admissions in each critical care unit for a specific month and assess the electronic surveillance platform and confirm if all the patients are registered along with all the required information about the devices which is required for the surveillance. Interview the infection prevention and control team about the number of critical units admissions and confirm whether they are entered in the national electronic system or not or if any of the patient is missed. Randomly ask the infection control practitioners to assess the national electronic surveillance system and get the count of patient under surveillance for that particular audit visit date and compare with the, with the manual data. Ask the indirect questions like if the patient is not on a device in the ICU, will you register this patient in, in the electronic system or not? The answer should be yes because ICPs have to register all the patients admitted in the critical care unit with or without devices as the clients in the national electronic system. Just check that the results of surveillance are regularly analyzed, interpreted and communicated to the staff and the concerned departments or not. Review the monthly and the quarterly surveillance statistics. Review the trend of the data over time for the rate of healthcare associated infection over the months and compare to the benchmark and check whether the trend is increasing or decreasing. Projected trends of VAE, VAP, CLAPC, CAUT, SSI and MDROs are very important. Check for the last healthcare associated infection report and is shared with the concerned units, ICU, surgical unit or high rank administration or not. A copy of manual copy of manual or send email is there or not. Check the reports in the concerned areas like ICUs, burns units or the neonatal care units. Just ask them what is benchmarking. It is a process of comparing oneself to the others performing the similar activities so as to continuously improve the National Health Safety Network NHSN in the US acute care hospitals is the oldest and the most widely used system of benchmarking which we are also following. A written report should be developed to provide a mechanism to interpret and disseminate the surveillance data to stimulate the performance improvement activities. Tables, graphs, charts are effective tools for organizing, summarizing and visually displaying the data and should be used as applicable. The titles should be very clear and specific for each of the category of healthcare associated infection. The surgical site infections in the patients undergoing the coronary artery bypass graft in hospital 
A from January. Ask the head and the staff nurses if the surveillance data was being communicated to them or not. Ask them to show the trends posted on the bulletin boards. Ask the medical staff in the critical care units at randomly as for example the VAE rate of their unit in any of the quarters of 2022. Ask the surgeons or the OR staff for the SSI trends for the last quarter and if it is increasing continuously ask them to prepare a root cause analysis and submit to the regional directorate and the regional directorate should submit in the general directorate and it will be followed accordingly and the action plan should be recommended. Ask the infection control practitioners about the mechanism of data communication reporting to the concerned units, electronic and manual and the frequency of reporting. The high infection rates should be notified immediately to the concerned authorities. The results of the surveillance are regularly reviewed by the infection control committee or the action plan is developed and followed up accordingly at least once a quarter. I see committee meeting minutes for the past months to confirm the discussion of the high surveillance trends should be reviewed. The results of high strengths should be disseminated monthly as well to the respective departments. Review the action plan for the corrective actions based on the results of surveillance. All the interventions should be evidence-based. Review the updated status of action plan after needed interventions and follow-up. Interview the IPC team and members of IC committee to confirm the following about the review and discussion of high surveillance statistics. Ask about the recent interventions done for significantly high rates. Ask to give, the exam, for example, the past year and mention what interventions were done and how the follow-up was done. For example, increased county rate in a quarter cause, and the causes of high county rate in that quarter. There might be poor aseptic technique upon insertion, might be lack of implementation of urinary catheter bundle, prolonged use of catheter without indication, collection bag is not kept below the level of bladder at all the times, and lack of sterile technique and continuously closed drainage system. The interventions taken by them should be strict implementation of urinary catheter bundle, daily review of necessity and prompt removal, a strict adherence to aseptic technique on insertion, appropriate hand hygiene practices all the times, maximal barrier precautions, gloves, drapes and sponges, a sterile or antiseptic solution for cleaning the urethral meatus, single-use pocket of sterile lubricant jelly for the insertion in each patient. In case of SSI, the increased SSI rate in any quarter. If SSI rate is on the higher rate for the last few quarters, ICT members should develop a corrective action plan or the performance improvement project to find out the causes of increased SSI rates over the past few months. The causes could be decreased compliance to the SSI bundle, non-availability of the prophylactic antibiotic, use of razors instead of hair clippers, poor aseptic technique during the procedure, and the interventions would include the increased adherence to the SSI bundle elements, a strict, a strict implementation of aseptic technique in the OR, continuous education and training activities, The results of surveillance are used to reduce the highs through well-designed quality improvement projects. Review the performance improvement projects related to the surveillance based on the results of highest statistics. Check if the department has selected these specific indication indicators after reviewing the results of surveillance and consideration of their attributable morbidity, the cost, preventability and transmission risks. They reflect the current policy areas priority areas according to the infection control program and policy development. For example, if surveillance trends show the, the projected rate or the higher rate for the specific highs like increased CLEPSI rate in neonatal ICU, IC department should design a CLEPSI imp improvement project for the neonatal ICU and it should be followed accordingly.
what is a performance improvement project it is a quality tool with concentrated effort on a particular problem in one or more areas of a facility it involves gathering information systematically to clarify the issues and address the problems and intervene for the improvements the, set, the steps defined by focus pd pdca the focus pdsa acronym describes the basic components of the improvement projects find a process opportunity for the improvement or organize a team clarify the current understanding of the process understand and variation in the process select a strategy for improvement plan do check and act interview the infection prevention and control team to confirm how they have selected a specific project to assess the knowledge that hospital uses the risks rate and trend information to design and modify the processes to reduce the healthcare associated infections to the lowest possible level interview the head and the charged nurses the medical staff in the critical care unit regarding any ongoing performance improvement project interview the head of the department and charged nurses the medical staff in the critical care unit the infection prevention and control team to confirm that the hospital makes the necessary improvements for the identified epidemiologically important infections processes and devices that are associated with the risk of healthcare associated infections is specific to the selected performance improvement projects for example if there is ongoing ssi improvement project we can interview the relevant staff involved in the project during the visit like surgical ward or staff or the surgical emergency what specific interventions have been communicated to you as a part of ssi performance improvement project and what is what was the previous rate and what is the current rate of that surgical site that surgical site infection